I want to give you a very high-level overview of a project that we're working on for the Belgian government, which is basically a whole web platform. And since this is a web track, I'm not going to bore you with any government politics, but with the technology that we're using for this platform. So if you're, who is a developer here? I know, okay, then I'm talking to the right crowd. <laughs> because everybody would go like, I'm that politician, that will be a problem. Okay, let's get started. Um, this is what we're doing. A web platform that works on any device. Uh, in the Belgian government, there is none. This is the only one. What are we also doing? We're doing everything in the open. It's open source. It's open development. Why open matters? Read it later. Don't have time for it. You know all that. It's open development. We have a website where you can follow everything that we do. Openpolice.be. It's open source. All our code, all our code is published on GitHub. And you can see the development happening on a daily basis. You can even install the platform and test it yourself. The instructions you can find in the file in the repository. And it's open data. It's also an open data web service. We're integrating with different open data web services, for example, with AGIF in Belgium, which is the geolocation portal for. Uh, for and we're also going to publish our own open data later this year. This is the problem that we're trying to solve. If you've done any web projects, you know how difficult it is for people to actually deliver good content online. Creating a web portal is complex for a developer, but having somebody write good content is even more complex. You need to imagine that most of our webmasters are people in their 40s and their 50s that barely know how the start button in Windows works, let alone how to write a text online that is actually good quality. That's what we're doing. Now, what technologies are we using to build this? Starting with standards, of course, HTTP. And this is a little bit of a missing standard in a way that a lot of our, us web developers don't know enough yet about HTTP. If you want to start doing open data and you want to start doing REST, then HTTP becomes very important. Uh, most of us know that there is something like an OK200 status. But do you know about 410 gone, or 404 not found, or do you know what the differences are between the 300 redirects? Those are important things if you want to start building platforms like this. HTML5, which became an official standard, of course. CSS3, simple on the front end. Everything is CSS3 today. And do you know this one? Flexbox, which also became an official standard which is a great way of building more modern user interfaces or back-end user interfaces built with Flexbox and it gives us a much more richer environment. People really believe that they're almost working in a desktop application when they see this. I could show it, but I don't have time enough, so go to the demo. There's a demo. I'll show you the link where you can test this. Technologies that we use are PHP 5.4, moving to PHP 5.5. This has to do a little bit with the guys running our servers and have installed MySQL 5 or any MySQL directive. And Lynx as web server. We use Apache. Users who uses Lynx. Right. So we choose for this, for this project where we're, st we're basically serving a lot of static information that doesn't change often. This is a great way of, of doing it. JavaScript. That was a lot of JavaScript talk. A lot of JavaScript today. Um, Small introduction, I'm a co-founder of Joomla. I did that 10 years ago when we started Joomla. I'm not sure if there's Joomla users in the room. We had one, a few in the back. We had one little JavaScript file that was 2005, right? Today, 30, 40% of your code base is JavaScript. And the world has changed quite a bit. Um, SAS, who knows this? Right. So CSS, writing CSS is quite boring and quite uh, compulsive. So You'd use a, a pre-compiler for your CSS, and we do that in SAS. What else? What tools do you need? Git. And there's a little story here, because I was talking to the Belgian government and to their in-house consultants, and I had 50 people in the room, a room like this. And I asked them, like, how many of you are doing something with version control? How many do use Git? And I saw two hands go up. And then I asked them, like, what do you use? Well, we upload to our servers using FTP. <laughs> and we share our code using email. So we see there's still a lot of advocacy needs to get. For us, this is quite normal. For them, not so much. 
Capistrano, who uses this? Uh, Capistrano is a deploy tool. It's a Ruby tool. It's a great deploy tool. One of the advantages of this is that it actually allows us to deploy inside a firewall, be behind a firewall. We go in through, a, through, uh, through SSH or over a VPN connection, and we can deploy from the outside to the inside. Not every deploy tool can do this, but Capistrano can do that. It, it, it can actually hop multiple times if you want to do that, which is a very powerful thing because we're working from our office and we're basically getting into the servers in Brussels, so we need to go through a few loops to do that. Uh, PHP Make, maybe you know this if you're a PHP developer or not. This is a tool to do PHP migrations, database migrations. If you start deploying on a server and you start making changes to your database, you of course also need to migrate your database changes and this is where the tool comes in. So it's integrated, we have integrated it with Capistrano. So you can do an up and a down. If something goes wrong, you do a down, you go a version back. Uh, that is what you do with database migrations. Composer, PHP developers here, not so much. I saw a guy r doing an, an NPM package in the back when I was sitting there. Uh, the same deal, right? This is a package manager for PHP, uh, which we use a lot because we're the, the main language we use is PHP, so we do a lot of PHP uh, package management uh, through Composer. It also has dependency management and everything. For the Linux guys, an, an apt get or something similar, this is the same deal. Uh, mod PHP. No? Who uses this? A few people there? This is awesome. This is awesome stuff. This is a module that exists for Apache and for Nynx that is developed by Google. It allows you to really optimize the output of your web server. And you can do a lot with it. You can shrink images, you can uh, compress CSS files, uh, you can put multiple JavaScript files together, um, you can make your images smaller, it optimizes your page so that you don't need to do these things on your server. If you would do that in PHP, it would become a quite slow process. And you do this actually right when the content is being served. It also has caching and you can configure it completely for your site. This is very powerful. One of the things it also does is take into account that you have a mobile device connecting so that the image really needs to be made smaller and lower quality, for example. Um, Elasticsearch, who uses this? A few, also completely open source. All these tools, by the way, are open source. Elasticsearch we use because we have 150 installations running. They're separate databases, but at some point we also want to bring all that data together, especially when we, we want to build REST services. Uh, so we basically pump information from MySQL into an Elasticsearch database because it's quite uh, fast to look into that. We, we have a lot of faster re re uh, request rate there. So that's one of the things we do. Not everything is MySQL, but the, slow, the information that is, that is slow to update goes into MySQL. Information that we need to get access to very fast goes in here. Vagrant? One Vagrant user, two Vagrant users, Docker users in the room? few Docker users here. Vagrant is a very nice way to set up a local development environment. If you go to the police repository to open police and you go to GitHub, you will find the installation instructions for Vagrant. We have a Vagrant box that is specific for this project. You download the box and you get a complete install of this platform on your local machine. You can start playing with it. We use this because it allows us to, to get the same environment running everywhere. All of our developers install this and can start developing immediately. And the, the box is identical. Right. You don't want to have the problem that it doesn't seem to work on the production server. Well, but it works here on my machine. Right. With an identical installation, that problem is less likely to happen. Methodologies, quite quick. Ob object orientation and design patterns. Who still writes procedural code? Good. <laughs> Let's not go there. Mobile first. This is a methodology you should be aware of, like how do you develop websites in a mobile first methodology? If you haven't done that yet, read up about it. Progressive enhancement, who knows this? A little bit, quite simply said, we're not hiding any information. We go from the smallest screen to the biggest screen. The information is always the same. Phone, tablet, desktop, same information, a little bit more images that we might show and a different header or anything, but the information is the same. We enhance it progressively. On the small screen or any screen, we also make sure that it works without anything, without images, without JavaScript, like the lowest common denominator. And then we build up from there. Them? Nobody? I found one that they don't know yet. <laughs> Good. <laughs> BAM is a methodology of building CSS class names and IDs. 
Uh, and it's a very interesting way. Um, it basically goes back a little bit to biology and it, it talks about atomic, it's a, a kind of way of atomically designing uh, class names. You should read up on it. The good thing about BEM is that every designer uses the same way of designing its class names. So if you look at HTML markup that includes BEM, then you can read it and you can understand it. It even gives you information about how the page is structured and where what is going to be. Because CSS is a pain if everybody uses different class names, right? We have Bootstrap and we have all these other things, but the class names are insanely complex because they're non-standard. This standardizes class names. Gitflow, who uses Gitflow? There are pros and cons, but we are Gitflow users. That's just the way that we deal with our branching model in Git. If you don't know that yet, look it up. Agile and Lean, where are the Scrum Agile and Lean guys here? Who still does Waterfall? Don't be shy. Okay, good. So everything is very lean and very agile. In a government, very hard to do. Governments are by definition, not agile and not lean. We all know that, so it's very hard to do. We kind of like try to take our approaches a little bit on the edge, on the outside, so we can play there. And sometimes, you know, we come in a bit and we go like, hey, this is what we're doing, and we invite people to take part in that project. As much people, you, you want to bring as much pe uh, people on the table as possible, but it's not always possible to bring everybody on the table because then you don't get anything done at all. Everybody all together from early on. Architecture, component-based, everything is a component. Everything can be reused and built upon. HMVC, nobody? Model view controller, somebody? Hierarchical model view controller, that you can run multiple MVCs to, uh, at the same time. It's a very powerful thing. When you have a component-based architecture, you can run multiple components during one request. Each component is basically built using MVC. Java guys, no Java guys, right? I thought so. REST and JSON, this should be clear. Everybody does that, who doesn't? <laughs> Thank God, no SOAP guys here. Um, and a lot more stuff. There is a list of all the open source tools and libraries that we use on the website itself. So the result is this. And if you go this is what the administrator looks like. So we built a very, very simple administrator for people to build, in this case, publish news articles. They can just type a little, little bit of news. They cannot even insert images here. It's way too complex because an image can have different sizes on different devices. You don't want them to insert it. They can add it here, and we put it in place. They can publish it. They can put a date, and that's it. Nothing more because otherwise they mess it up. And we have an integrated support system. This is actually using Elasticsearch. We bring all the tickets from all the different websites together, and this allows us to have a separate administrator for our support. Demos, openpolice.be slash demo, allows you to see this in action. And if you go to localpolice.be slash Leuven, that's one of the sites that you can see in action. You can check it on your phone or your tablet or on your desktop. Some quick metrics. Tonight, today we have a 75% of all police zones in Belgium are using this, and we hope to get to 100% with a little bit of political pushing because that's not always as easy. The reason that is is because police zones in Belgium are separate companies, and they have their own budgets, and their own IT managers, and they make their own decisions. Not always good decisions, but still. Um, online growth, you see a nice growth. Since 2011, we started this, so we're now at uh, Two and a half million page uh, views a year, which for the police is quite nice, <coughs> especially because the content, the quality of the content has been going up, and we have been training people quite hard on that. This is a very nice one. Mobile devices are going up to 30%, and will be going up over 30% by the end of the year. This is also why we're putting a lot of effort into mobile, mobile first, and uh, adaptive and change mode. And did I did that, do that in 15 minutes? Awesome. So yeah, there's still time for questions. Wow. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Do you use a PHP framework? Uh, yes. We built our own. We built our own. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so these sites came from a Joomla uh, background. Um, this is how I got involved in the project. 
uh, six years ago I was asked to help them get this running uh, on Joomla. Why? Because this doesn't fit in a content management system uh, and it, the architecture that we need is quite specific. Like, technically speaking, everything here is based on geo information. Everything is street tagged. All the news articles, uh, all the other information that sits in the site is tagged by street and is categorized by street. Uh, there is no system that really does that. And architecture-wise, we're, we're using a, a, a number of PHP libraries, but the, the framework itself, the architecture itself, itself, we have built our, uh, our on our own, and it's called Nuku. You can find it at nuku.org. Uh, it's also an open source project that, that I'm working on. It works in Joomla, but it also has a separate version uh, that you can run standalone, and that is what we do here. You, you said you use some components. Do you use components from, uh, from Stephanie stack, uh, or also some uh, yeah, Symfony, um, uh, Symfony not at the moment, uh, but we use a lot of other PHP libraries. Uh, we're not going to develop those on our own. Where we can reuse them, we will, but the overall architecture that brings all that together, which is the HMVC architecture, that's something that we built there on our own. Because that is not something that Symfony or Xen provides, right? Xen has a little bit of MVC, but not much. So that's the part that we do on our own. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. It's already invented, so <laughs> let's not do that. Any other questions? For the, for the front uh, JavaScript, uh, you use uh, libraries too? Uh, yes. Uh, maybe I can <coughs> quickly check. Oops. Not going to QWERTY, right? Uh. I think the list is on GitHub, but I'm not sure. So I just picked a couple of them, right? But these are all of them. Uh, so there is um, Bauer is in here, um, JavaScript-wise. Imagine uh, jQuery, parts of jQuery, uh, Magnific pop-up. There's a b bunch of stuff. A little bit of Mutual still we're getting out. Um, placeholder job dot JS a little bit because this is a very static kind of site. So we're not playing with Ember or Angular or anything like that. We do that a little bit in our in our backend, but even not much there. Uh, so there is some JavaScript. We actually try to limit JavaScript as much as possible. It makes the experience on mobile devices too slow. Uh, it's all great uh, having all that Angular and Ember around, but in the end, this thing simply needs to be super fast. Uh, right now, it's among the top 10 fastest websites in the world. If you look at the performance, we're looking at 500 milliseconds. Page transfer, which is rendering in the browser. Basically everything, getting it from the server, rendering it in the browser. And we want to bring that down to 100 milliseconds. Uh, when we have the varnish cache on, which is not done yet, when we have that on, it will go down to basically network latency, which is 100 milliseconds, because we're local with our servers. Thank you. Last you question. You seem to be state of the art in the uh, developing environment and techniques. Uh, do you have something in for security? <laughs> uh, for security, the rule is simple. Um, we're not putting anything on there that has any level of security. Uh, because security-wise, we, we need to deal with hosting that we don't control, that is being controlled by the government. Uh, and the rule there is, let's not overcomplicate. Let's just keep all this public. It's all public information. If they hack it, great, because it's, anyway, it's there anyway. And we're making all the data that sits in the platform also a public as open data. So security-wise, not a big issue. To answer your question completely, if we had to do that, we would have need to move servers to a company that knows about security. But uh, I didn't say that out loud. Okay, thank you. Thank you.